What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. And today we're gonna look at these cheap budget grinders. Now, why am I doing that? Why, when you see behind me these grinders, why would I be looking at these much cheaper grinders? Well, it's simple. The majority of us coffee enthusiasts can simply not afford three, four, five thousand dollar grinders. Only a very small percentage of people can actually do that. So I wanted to make a video that is in line with the, my whole YouTube, which is making coffee accessible to the masses. Now, if I'm wanting to do that, that means I need to find grinders and find experiences that can match the budgets of the majority of my viewers. Now, I know that a lot of us can afford you know, sub $400 conical burr grinders. But the reality is a lot of us are wanting that experience with flat burr grinders. This is what everyone talks about, is that more narrow particle distribution, the higher clarity shots, juicier tasting coffees. But there aren't really any in that sub $600 range. You can get the Turin DF64, you can get the Barats Avaria, which are both great grinders, but 600 is even too steep for a lot of us. So I was convinced and I was motivated and ready to go on finding a grinder that fit in that 200 and below budget. Now some of these, when they're all said and done with the burrs that I've found, might cost up to 300, but I can promise you this, none of these grinders in the end of this video will cost more than $300 out of your pocket, and most of them will cost around 140 up to $200, depending on what burrs you decide on. So anyway, enough of the glipper glabber. Let's get this, that's not even a word, I just made it up just for you all because I love you, but let's get this video started right now. These are the birds that I have found. Aren't you so excited? Because I am. So, I found a lot of birds for this video, and let me tell you, they're really great. Now these grinders, you might be asking, well, what are the price ranges? What are the differences? They all look quite similar. Well, the answer to that is that, well, they are quite similar. Uh, this design is kind of shared, you know? I'm not gonna, uh, just to go ahead and say out front, I'm not gonna call anything a knockoff. I'm not gonna say who did what. The only thing I will say is in a conversation with a distributor, apparently the original design that looks like this right here was the master designer of Akira Koki. But of course, this is allegedly, I don't know anything for sure. What I'm trying to do with this video is not to say, hey, go buy these grinders over other grinders, but is to give you options on what is currently on the market so that we can all in our budgets comfortably buy grinders that make dank coffee. So let's go down the list here. Let's figure out what we got. Obviously these two grinders and these two grinders look very similar and that's because guess what? They are, if you take it apart, they look quite similar as well. But considering that this was the allegedly original design, it also aligns with the fact that it's my favorite of the four, but we'll get to that in a bit. This is the Fema 600N grinder. Now this one has been known for a little while on the barista forums. Um, it's a great 60 millimeter grinder as all these are, 60 millimeter flat burr vertically mounted grinders. It has a 150 watt motor and spins, all of these spin at right around 2600 RPM. This costs around $120, depending on where you get it. The Akira Koki, 60 mils, 150 watts uh, uh, motor, 2600 RPM, and yeah, about $120, $150. Shioleo, this one runs about $120, $150, 150 watt motor around 2600 RPM. We have the Urbonic right here. Now this one is a little more expensive. It's around $220, but it's 250 watts. The motor's 250 watts, 60 mil burrs, uh, around 2600 RPM. This one is a $70 Amazon grinder that didn't really have a name to it, but it has a 150 watt motor and it runs around 2600. And then finally, this little one's called a Yaoman. This one is a 100 watt motor, 60 mil burrs, and spins around that 2600 RPM. So that's a quick overview of these. Now, why did I choose this style for what I am calling the best grinder under $500? Why does it look like this? Why this style with all these other options out there? Well, it's simple. I personally prefer flat burr profiles to conicals. I, I want, and I know that 
Conicals are more easy to find under this $500 range, some really great ones even. So I wanted to do something that was more difficult to find, especially in the US market. So I landed on 60 millimeter flatbird grinders that are vertically mounted to reduce retention, most optimizing or, 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 or even mirroring what you're gonna get in these higher end game grinders. These big flat mounted burrs, you know, some of them have like these 80 millimeter burrs, like in that EG1 that are, that are um, mounted like so, except it's a little tilted in the EG1, which helps with the retention, but yeah. So I wanted to get something that was ticking all these boxes and I found a few options. So you're asking me, well, which one is the best? Well, first let's go ahead and take a look at these and look at the ergonomics, look how they're, they're all made. First off, let's look at all these knobs. So obviously the knob here, the knob here, and the knob here, and the knob here are all identical. They all go up to 10. They go from one to 10. Now a quick mod that you can do on any of these, as you see here, is a stepless modification. Very simple. All you're gonna do for that, let me grab a screwdriver. All you're gonna do for the stepless modification is you're just gonna take this center screw out. Just very simply. And then you're gonna take this all the way off all right, boom, I just throw stuff around. And then right here, there's usually a little peg with a spring. You just take that out and you take the spring out as well. Then you replace this. Boom, 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 boom. All right, put this back on. And obviously if you take this off, you're gonna have to recalibrate, which isn't a big deal. You'll just go to touch, make that the zero point, and then screw your screw back in. So this is now not calibrated, but it's okay, because there are no burrs in it right now. But here we go. All right, so that is the stepless little modification that you can do. Now, I've read online that some people have issues with it maintaining its grind, like it'll drift during the grinding. If that's the case, you can always take some, some sort of tape for resistance. I've not run into that with any of these actually, and I've done the stepless modification on them all. But again, that's something that you can uh, decide there. You don't have to do that modification. It's just very simple, it takes five seconds. Um, anyway, so. That's one thing that we can do on each of these. The grinder knob here is a little different, right? So it's the same motion, but they have a different number system that they have actually on the grinder. Same with the Urbonic as opposed to on the knob. Now, another thing to look at is all of these screws on the sides are actual Phillips head, okay? And then these two in the middle are just little thumb screws. So th this is really nice because you can get to the burrs without, without uh, taking off or, or, or using a screwdriver. You can just straight up pull this out and all of them look the same as this, by the way, but I'm just gonna take this one off. They all look the same. This one's just thumb screws, so it's much easier to take off. This is gonna jut out, and boom. Oh, there's a bead in there. All right, so there we go. There's our burr, right there. And so they all have a spring in there, obviously, for, for when, you're doing, uh, when you're going finer and coarser. The spring is what um, gives you the resistance. So. The way that you're making it finer and coarser is when you're twisting the knob, this little guy protrudes out. I don't know if you can see that on the side. As you twist, it protrudes. As you uh, go coarser, it comes back in. So that's pushing this very minusculely. Uh, and so that spring is what is allowing us to go finer and coarser, finer and coarser. All right. And then putting it back on is very simple. You just push it back in, take the thumb screws, Whoops, I said simple. And that does not look simple, does it? No, it's very, it is simple. It's weird doing it from behind. Just gonna take it, screw it back in. And there you have it. It's the same exact, uh, same exact process with these other four grinders. You're just using a Phillips head to pull those out. Then you can pull the grinder, the grind chamber right on out. All right, so we have those. Now the, the most expensive on the table, the Urbonic, also has something I really enjoy on the back. They hide the screws with these little rubber sockets, which looks really nice. All the rest of them have exposed screws. Now, a friend of mine who uh, works, on, uh, uh, works on grinders, I uh, actually had him check out this one specifically from Amazon, and he pulled it apart and checked it all out. And what's really cool about the design of all of these, because they're all the same in, in, in one, way, one way or another, uh, is if you pull the motor out, there is no motor housing. The housing is the actual grinder. So if you were to take the back off of this, there's just uh, uh, magnets aligning this and that's where the motor goes directly in. There's no housing. 
So it, it cuts down on cost and, uh, and maybe you're wondering how are these are so cheap? Well, there's no, there's no housing. That motor is just right there. So, uh, you know, don't mess around inside these. You can get yourself really hurt because there's not many safety things going on with these grinders. So don't mess around. Uh, don't be silly. I, 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 I don't recommend it. Granted, I say that and I did a dimmer modification on this one, but I wasn't getting up in the motor housing. This was down in the foot where I could do that and I'll go over that here in a second. All right, so all of these have their different pros and cons. They have different hoppers. Uh, these are modded hoppers that you can purchase at checkout on AliExpress or with the distributor that I got this from. Everything will be linked below in the caption. So if you uh, are curious, I'll have them all by their name and model and I'll have where I got them uh, and some more information down there. So check that out. Okay, so quickly, we have the RPM of them all is right around 2600. Some of them weren't really uh, told, but they all seem to be right at the same speed. Uh, and then you have 150, 150, 150, 250, 150, and 100 watt motors. So yeah, let's move on to the burrs because I know that's what you are all wanting to know uh, because you know, as long as we're not stalling on the grinding up here, then the burr geometry is a huge thing. We're not gonna be able to change the auger. We won't be able to have a double grind feature going with these that we have to remember these are hundred to $200 grinders, but we can pimp out those burrs. All right, so the burr set that comes with this cheapest grinders, with these cheapest grinders, these two right here look like this. So I'm not quite sure what they're made out of. It feels like some sort of carbon material, but it's definitely very cheap feeling. And honestly, it feels like graphite. Like it's, I don't, I don't like it. But also you can tell that the cuts are very uneven, right? So I've, in the other set, in the other pair of burrs that I have, the cuts are a little bit different than this. So what, what you have here is just inconsistencies in the burr creations. So these are trash and I want to throw them in the trash where they belong. Um, the, the, the stock burrs on the Urbonic uh, are not titanium coated, but I did get the upgraded titanium coated ones. Now it's the same geometry, but the titanium, all that's going to add is longevity to the burrs. I just felt like being extra. It was like an extra 20 bucks. So I went ahead and did the upgrade. So what you're going to have, what you're going to have here is just a little extra, a little extra something, something. All right. For the Shioleo. We have these burrs, identical on both sides. So you can take them out, put them in however you want without getting messed up. All right, so the, these produce pretty good grounds. Not the greatest, but not, not bad, not bad. And then we have on the next one with the, so with the Akira, I got this through a distributor out of Thailand and I opted to have it shipped with the SSP burrs. Okay, so they came outfitted with SSPs. These are SSP red coated 60 millimeter burrs. All right, so I don't have the stock burst for the Akira, but from what they said, they look similar to this, which I'll get to this in just a second. And then finally, the famous stock burrs are right here. All right, so what we have is we've got the Shioleo, the Fema, the Urbonic, and the cheap burrs all right there. So you can see the cuts on them. You can see the depth. Obviously the Urbonic is crafted a lot nicer than the other ones. These are pretty shallow grooves, which isn't ideal for, uh, for uniform, uh, uniform grinding. So this one has nice cut, nice deep cuts. The, the stock one on those cheap ones are really shallow grooves. You can get espresso powder with it, but you're gonna get a lot of fines on filter coffee that are really unpleasant. These two do all right, as I said. If you're looking for uh, you know, a grinder where you're not having to upgrade the burrs, you know, the, the Shioleo burr set is better than that Fahima one. So perhaps, you know, grab that and you, know, you, can, you can sit happy with a $100 grinder that you don't have to change burrs with. But I would recommend what I'm about to show you. So the impetus of this video comes from my love of the grinder that is installed on the Gebby 2-in-1 Brewer and Grinder. Now the grinder there has a 60 millimeter burr set in it that's vertically mounted as well, has low retention, but the grounds that I'd been creating for my filter coffee was, was lovely. I, was, I absolutely adored it. And so I went on a mission to find who crafts these burrs. Now I'm not sure if this company is the one that crafts them, but they are the same exact geometry. The depth of them, at least optically and, and physically, are identical. Everything about it is the same. So, at least to my eye, I found the burrs, which are right here. All right, now these burrs only cost $26. All right, 26 bucks. Super cheap and they make incredible grounds. I was very stoked to find them. 
And then I also found their titanium coated counterpart for $52. All right. And again, all this will be linked below where I got them. And I'm telling you, I've put them, I've put them, I have two Gevy two in one uh, brewer and grinders, and I've put the new set that I found in one, and I have the old set, the one that came with the Gevy and the other, and they are, they, at least to me and my taste buds and to the extractions were identical. So I'm assuming if these aren't the ones who manufacture it, they're carrying the same burrs that are put in the Gevy. This is all speculation again. I have no confirmation of this, but all I know is I liked the, the uh, distribution from the Gevy grinder, and this is what I'm pretty sure are those burrs. Now, to, uh, to end this, I, do, I did find two sets of SSP burrs to end the burr section, I should say, not to end the video. We got a while to go. I did find two sets of SSP 60 millimeter burrs. My friend at Cafe Clement, who so graciously donated this FEMA uh, 600 in grinder to the video, had found these Silver Knight SSP burrs that I don't think are being made anymore, but maybe if uh, with enough chatter we can get Hansung to make some more. Uh, they do a really great job, especially for filter brewed coffee. They make incredibly low fines for a grinder at this price. Very good burrs. I, I've been really enjoying a lot. And then, of course, the red speed I showed earlier. So let me put those side by side for you all. So these are the two SSP burrs that I found for it. The red coat or the red speed were about $150. And then I'm not sure on these, but I'd imagine about the same price if we get them to make some more. All right, so now I know you're wondering, okay, that's cool and all, but which ones of these burrs will fit on which machines? Well, I got you, and I'm about to show you right now. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Starting right here, the burrs that fit are obviously the stock burrs. And this, this is the same. So the stock burrs fit on these two. The urbanic burrs fit on these two, and then both sets of Gevy burrs fit on these two. Now, I know these are the what come with the Urbonic, but also when you go on AliExpress, which thank you AliExpress, they were, a, a, I guess, a partial sponsor of this video. They gave me a $200 voucher on their website with which I bought this and an extra set of these to see if they were identical to the Urbonic, and they are. So a second ago when you saw me pull the burrs out of here, they're identical to this, okay? So these are the burrs you can buy on AliExpress. So these are all the ones that fit on these two grinders. So while I don't recommend these because they stalled a lot, the, the manufacturing's a little bit more sloppy, they just don't feel as, as great as these other grinders, uh, these are options you can go with, and these burrs will all fit. And again, the Gevy burrs, I think this is all you really need, and they're 26 bucks, and again, everything is in the caption below. So what I, what I was doing, uh, and oh, actually, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. You should know that if you're gonna use these grinders and switch out from these burrs, you should know that these burrs, all of them, are taller. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this very well, but the, all these extra burrs have a little bit of height on those stock ones. Probably about a, maybe a millimeter. You can't, probably can't really see that, but all the extra burrs, all these new burrs, are taller. So the issue is when you replace them, you are caught within just a small area that you can grind and it's only espresso grounds. So when I was doing it, I couldn't get coarser than three before the burr started to rattle. And the reason is because it lost pressure. I got so coarse on the knob, once I calibrated it to zero touch, I went out and I was so far out that the nub came inside of the, the front, the housing of, that, uh, of the burr whatever that term is, I'm blanking. Anyway, that, so you really only have one to three. So you can really only do espresso if you replace the burr sets on these two grinders because of how thin the stock burr is. It's just a very, very thin burr. So that is, more than anything, that is the number one way, reason I would dissuade you from these unless you're only using it for espresso and you want to buy through Amazon, you want it in two days, in which case I would recommend this one because it's a 150 watt motor. It's gonna last a little bit longer than the 100 watt one for $20 cheaper. Okay, so those burrs fit in that grinder. Now these two grinders, I'm pairing these up because these two are virtually the same as far as their design and even shoot, even the stickers on the, on the sides. It's all the same. These two are virtually the same as well with the exception of this one has a 250 watt motor and it has those cute little rubber uh, coverings on the back screws, which I think is a nice little um, implementation. But what fits on these are the stock, which as I said before, are these, except these are the titanium coated. So you have the stock, which are solid, 
Okay, so if you want if you want a 250 watt motor that's gonna you know is gonna last you, then I would I would say get this. It comes with some nice burrs. You can do the titanium upgrade if you want to have a longer life span out of those burrs. Also, the Gevi burrs fit in these. So that's all that we have fitting in these right here. All right. Sadly, the SSPs don't fit in either of these two nor these two. But now they fit on the back walls of these, the stationary, but on the rotary. The issue is, is you would have to take a lathe to the, uh, here, let me just show you. All right, so you'll have to take a lathe to this, as you see I have very poorly, um, in order to make it smaller. And it is just something that I don't recommend you doing. Uh, you can if you'd like. I did this for this one, uh, and it was still difficult to get the SSP. And also, uh, it seems that on these, uh, the, the holes are a little bit different, so you'd have to drill new holes for the SSP. So overall, if you're wanting the SSP, these are not the good, the good choices. Again, you can, you know, you can shave it down if you would, if you would like, if you're handy with tools. But for the majority of us, all you're wanting to do is get a grinder, maybe swap the burrs out because how easy that is, and hit go. All right, now these two, what burrs fit on them? Here we go. So you can fit obviously the stock burrs. Well, that's the Zioleo, but they fit. You're not going to buy Zioleo stock burrs though, and put them on here. The stock burrs obviously fit. The SSP Silver Knight fit, the SSP Red Coat fit, Red Speed fit, the Urbonic or the AliExpress Titanium Coat and the Regular fit, and then the Gabby Burrs fit. All right, so all of them, I mean, and if you wanted, you can probably buy these separate if you wanted these janky burrs, but those fit as well. So all of the burrs fit the famous 600N and the Akira Koki, okay? All of them, without having to make any modifications. So. Incredible. So if you were wondering which ones to do, if you want SSP, you have to do one of these two. All right. So now, what are my recommendations? And then we'll get into some little testing uh, so that you can see out of the ones I recommend what my thoughts are on how they're producing their coffees. So obviously, I don't recommend the two Amazon grinders. I feel like that's pretty obvious. They have the least amount of burrs that fit in them. They and, and you don't have any range without making some sort of modification, maybe shimming out the housing so that the front burr comes out a little bit more so you have more control with the with the knob. But you don't want to do all this modification when you could spend an extra $30 or $40. And a lot of times AliExpress has really nice uh, coupons or, 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 or um, sales that go on. Recently, they had this grinder for $60 on November 11th. So don't get these. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to tell you, I, I recommend against these. I don't like them. Uh, I don't think that they're going to do a good job for you. Next up, we have these two. Uh, they're very similar grinders. Uh, this one's about 220 bucks. This is about half the cost. But when I was putting in copious amounts of beans to season and to test these, this one stalled a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot, not even on the finest setting. It's, it's rated at 150 watts. I'm skeptical of that uh, just because this one's 150 watts and I will get to that in a second, but it never, it very rarely stalled. This one, it was constant. I was having to take this off with the thumb screws. I was having to pull it out and I was having to clean it out in order to keep going. So this, you're not going to be able to dump 20 grams in at once. You'll need to go a couple of beans at a time. This one being 250 watts is a behemoth. I had it at touch. It never stalled once and I was dumping in 30, 40 grams at a time at touch and it was running through without stalling. So I'm gonna keep this on the table, but the Shioleo, I'm moving off because I don't think it's there. Now with these last ones, with these last two, it comes specifically down for me to the fact that um, they're virtually impossible to separate. Like I said, uh, so when I was chatting with my friend, a distributor in Thailand, the uh, who told me that the uh, original design for this type of grinder, right, they all look the same. So the original design comes from the chief designer at Akira Koki, and they're, they have a friendship with FEMA and allowed them to use the same design for distribution in a different area. Um, this one is seems to be built a little bit better. Granted, this is an older model, and I don't know. I like this is matte black. It looks prettier, and they're like the same price. So I'm just going to go ahead and move this off, only because this one to me feels a little a little nicer, and you know. Uh, supposedly is the original design. So when I was doing my testing with these two grinders, of course you have to take into account that this one is relegated to only a few burr sets. Only these burr sets can really fit on it. Whereas all of these, and I'm only keeping the nice the, the burr sets that were really great on the table right now. Whereas this one could handle all five. 
So the biggest difference between these two is obviously the wattage on the motor and the capability of uh, these of having the burrs in there. So the SSPs fit on the Akira Koki, they do not fit on the Urbonic, but the Urbonic has a 250 watt motor, whereas uh, the Akira has a 150. So this is what it comes down to, and this is, these are the two I'm going to be making coffees with. I'm not going to I'm not going to waste time with these because this is going to be essentially the same as this. This is just a weaker version of this. So, like I said, if you're if you're thinking about the Shioleo, spend the same money and get one of these. Same wattage, same wattage. There's no point in going with this one, especially with how many times it stalled. And then these two are just silly. I just wanted to see what was out there. All right. So now I'm going to clean all this up. I'm going to put some birds into these, and we're going to pull some shots, and we're going to check out how they're pulling uh, with their respective burrs. Now, before moving on, I did want to say uh, one thing. What you see on a lot of these high-end grinders, like if you watch James Hoffman's high-end grinder showdown, most of those high-end grinders have what's called variable RPM, so you're able to change the speed of the burrs. Now, of course, at these cheap, cheap, cheap grinders, you don't have that capability, but there are ways around that. So one of the ways I've found, and I don't necessarily recommend this just because, you know, you could get shocked if you've never dealt with electricity before, but uh, you can do this, it, it, and you don't have to house it the way I did, but is a, the dimmer mod, just like I did right there in my uh, video with the Bambino showing you how to do flow control on your home machine on an Ulca pump. You can do the same thing on a grinder, so watch this. Are you ready? You hear that? All right, so I can slow down that auger. You see that? That auger is controlling the back burr. You see how slow it's getting? And I'm slowing it down more and more and more. There you go, and then all the way back up. All right. So that's what it looks like whenever you dim it. Now the issue with this modification is that when you are dimming it, you are literally dimming the power to the motor. So this specific grinder is already the 100 watts uh, grinder, and so it's already quite low in power. Now that's already problematic to begin with. When you add the dimmer, it can be more problematic. That all being said, I've been messing with this grinder for two months now, and I specifically did the dimmer mod on this because I knew that was going to be an issue, and I've ground a lot of espresso with the dimmer all the way down. Granted, I had to do a bean at a time, but it is an option for you if you are willing to take that risk because it can be risky. Now, I don't think, you know, uh, putting the dimmer on was not that difficult. I took the base off, and literally where the power switch is, that's where you route in the dimmer. I don't necessarily recommend it because, like I said, it can be dangerous, especially if you've never done that before, but it's an option. A safer option that has the same effect, it's just not as clean as mounting inside, is to take a router speed control. Now this, this is how this works. I'm going to take the plug from my grinder, I'm going to plug it straight into the router speed controller. Now I'm going to take the plug of that, and plug it into the wall or my extension cord. Now what we have is the same thing. I can slow it down and speed it up. All right, what's interesting with this is when you put it on full, you have full power. Just like if we had the dimmer and we had it on fully open. But if you switch to variable, and you go to the highest setting, it slows down. And as you go slower, it goes slower and slower and slower. There you are. Back up, that's as high as it goes on variable, and that's at full. All right. So those are two options to kind of make your own, you know, budget variable speed RPM. Now, there's no real way of doing it easily without, you know, installing some other stuff that none of us normie people can do, um, that, and that would be cost effective. If you were going to do it any other way, really, you'd need to just spend the money on a machine that's actually got it built in. But um, that is an option that you can do. Anyway, that is 
kind of the poor man's variable RPM. You can do it with a ver with the router controller, or you can put a dimmer into it, just like on the espresso machine. Again, I've had no issues with this, and if uh, just know if you do less than the less than the motor's rated RPM of what on these, they're about 2,600. You're gonna have to drop it in kind of bean by bean, which increases the time it takes to grind your coffee, but it gives you that extra element of control and helps us get closer to matching those high-end grinders. Now we are gonna get down to these two right here. So, a lot of these grinders, especially the Akira Coca, Akira Koki, uh, they only come in 220 volt, which for us in the United States of America, uh, we'll need to have some sort of uh, converter. So, you're gonna have to get a transformer, okay? in order to transform it from 220 to 110 so it doesn't mess up your wall, unless you have an outlet that can handle 220, in which case you're fine. But keep that in mind when you're purchasing these, that if you get one that is rated at 220, do not just use an adapter. Do not just take something that can fit your wall socket and go, it will not be okay. You need to have a transformer. Now, some of these companies will sell it with a, uh, well, I guess these don't, neither of these do. Um, some of these, oh wait, yes it does, the Urbonic. The Urbonic sells it in 110 with the US plug. So for my US viewers, just be sure that you check what plug it is and what voltage it's rated at. Otherwise, you could be in for some hurt. All right, so this one is at 220, this is at 110, so I've got to use the transformer when using this, but we're gonna, and I've got to, um, I've got to re-zero it since I took this off, which is actually a good time to show you how to calibrate these grinders and all of them have the same exact calibration process. So I'm going to show you how to calibrate it. So I have this out. I'm going to turn it on and then all you're going to do is you're slowly going to go finer and finer and finer until you hear that chirp. That's where those burrs are touching. Okay. So right there, I'm going to take the knob and I'm going to put it at right above the fine range because I want it to touch when I go down to the stop. I want to be able to go like that and it touch. So I'm setting the knob here. I'm gonna coarsen it a bit, just so when I screw it in, I don't get those burrs touching too much. I'm gonna screw this in. So that's how we zero it out. And now when I go down to zero, we got the chirp. All right, so now we have this all zeroed out. That's how you do it with all these machines. You're just gonna take off that front. You're just gonna turn it until it hits zero put the knob on, tighten it, you're good to go. So those machines are really simple, really intuitive. Um, yeah, so there we are. So what I'm gonna do now is make some espresso with both of these grinders. I think they are indicative of the best of the cheaper grinders. For something that's a little on the more expensive side, the Arbonic on the cheaper side, the Akira Koki. This one has the SSP Red Speed installed, and this one has those stock burrs installed, which honestly, they're very similar to those Gevy burrs that I showed you. I prefer the Gevy just a smidge, but we're gonna keep these stock because I, I imagine if someone's going after this grinder, they're going for the motor more than anything, because if you're going for the burr set, you'd be going for the Akira Koki. So this is gonna kind of be the showdown I do. I have found some really great, um, expressions with the SSPs in this and with the um, with those stock ones in here. So let's do a little side by side. So with all these grinders, you're wanting to use RDT. This will help lessen retention and it's going to get all of that gr those grounds through it and it will help lessen static, which there's quite a bit of static on these grinders. So I'm gonna start the grinder. I have it just at full. I'm not dimming the power to the grinder and I'm gonna dump all of them in at once so you can see that they are not Again, evenly distributing that liquid. And I'm gonna dump them in all at once so you know that it's not stalling. So here we go. And I'm gonna get it actually a little finer. And we're... So we're gonna dump it all in at once. Grinding. No stall. No drifting either with the stepless mod. All right, so it takes a little while to grind as this can be imagined with such a weak motor. All right, so it just got done grinding. It takes, to be honest with you, when you're doing such fine grind settings, which I'm right off touch, it's gonna take you upwards 20 or 30 seconds. I know that sounds like a ton, but again, we're sacrificing a lot when we're paying $120 for a grinder. So time is one of those things. You have the bellows here though to lessen retention even further than just the RDT. So I'm sitting here, I'm tapping it to get all those grounds out. And now we have our coffee. So I'll show you it once it's in the portafilter. We have 17 grams of coffee in there. A 
All right. All right. So we just pulled a blooming espresso. That was a dialed in shot. But of course, take into account that it takes, you know, 30, 40 seconds to grind and you have to bellows it quite a bit to lessen the retention. But this pulled a nice shot. We're going to go ahead and see how it tastes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe the coffee in terms of clarity, sweetness, and acidity. All right. Uh, and body texture. All right. Now, I'm going to do this, but I'm taking into account all the testing I've done prior to this. So uh, just remember that as I'm doing that. So, all right. So first and foremost, I was hit with a really juicy acidity. Really, really sweet. This is a washed Ethiopia coffee, just so you know. Go figure, right? Really, really sweet stone fruit up at the front. I would give it, uh, I mean, for the sweetness, for the sweetness factor, I would probably give it like an eight. Um, and eight, honestly, like a seven and a half, maybe out of 10. Whereas uh, the texture uh, on these shots, the texture is not incredible, but for this shot, I'm gonna give the, the texture probably a, a seven or seven and a half. The, um, the acidity, the acidity is pretty lively, but it's not, it's not as intense with SSP burrs as you would expect on something like the Legome uh, P100 or the P64 or on the DF64 with the same uh, burrs, but in the 64 millimeter size. So for that, I'm probably gonna give like a six and a half or maybe even a seven. And then for uh, clarity, clarity is actually really nice. I'm gonna give that an eight. So overall, you know, the shot of espresso is incredibly clean uh, for something that, um, for something that is, Goodness, overall, once you include the SSP burr price into it, $250, it's nothing compares to it up until you hit that, uh, you know, that, I guess, DF64 or even higher range of grinders. So this is, this is an absolutely remarkable shot. Those red, red speed SSP burrs in it really do make a big difference. Granted, uh, I don't. I, I, this video is already super long, so I'm not going to go through and taste every burr, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you with the Gebby burrs, the... Where are those suckers? Oh, they're right in front of me, aren't they? Yes, they are. They're right here. With these burrs in that same grinder, you're going to get similar sweetness, maybe even a little higher sweetness, less acidity and clarity, and a bigger body. Okay, so that's going to be the biggest difference between these Gebby burrs and those SSP burrs. Now, my only real recommendation for this machine, unless Hansung makes more of the Silver Knight, which will give you really clean pour-overs, and they'll give you kind of like thinner espressos with really high clarity, Essentially what you're looking at is these would be similar to maybe the HU burrs on what a lot of people in the high-end grinder realm consider would be, you know, sweeter, uh, uh, less, I guess, less clarity. Whereas the MP burrs, the multi-purpose burrs are going to give you that clarity you kind of seek. So um, for this, SSP is going to give you what I think is the best shot out of the Akira Koki. The uh, Gevi burrs are going to give you the sweetest shots out of the Akira Koki. And then these SSP Silver Knights with this different burr cut, this burr geometry right there different than the multi-purpose. This is going to give you the highest clarity um, and it's going to be a little bit more difficult pulling espresso with it because it's going to lose a lot of a lot of the body. So if your ideal espresso is something that's like uh, you know a luscious body, really sweet um, and, and the acidity kind of takes a back seat, the Akira with the Gevy Burrs is probably what's right for you. If you're someone who really likes to play with espresso profiles, maybe you have a Flare 58 or some sort of uh, some sort of uh, lever machine that you're using a hand grinder for right now because it's difficult in your budget to find something that works. This with the SSP multi-purpose is an incredible option. You're gonna get some really delicious espressos. You are gonna have to wait for that the grinder to, to uh, get those grounds out because it takes, like I said, 30 to 45 seconds. I'm sure as you use it, it'll break in uh, as those burrs get seasoned. It'll be different, but yeah, that would be my recommendation for this. But now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compare this shot with the Urbonic, with what comes with the Urbonic, which are these burrs. So if you see, here's the Urbonic burrs, and then here's a Gevy Titanium. So they're both titanium coated. You can see the small differences between them. This has a lot longer cuts. This one does not, okay? So my preference is the Gevy here, but this does a, a really great job with Espresso. The Gevy, I think, does a better job doing both filter and espresso, but here we are. All right, so we have the shot here from the Urbonic. I'm just gonna give it some, some, some uh, stirs back and forth. Let's see what it tastes like. All right, so immediately the body is bigger, the sweetness is more present, 
On this one, I'm gonna give the body like an eight. I'm gonna give a sweetness like an eight and a half. The acidity is muted for sure. The acidity is down probably to a five and a half or a six, whereas the clarity uh, is muted as well. I said whereas as if I was gonna say something different, but that's down to a five and a half and a six. So we have a maybe similar scoring coffee. This one scores a little bit less. Uh, I've definitely preferred the shot out of the SSPs, but again, it's up to, it's up to you what your uh, preferences are. So just quickly going over it, um, this one grinds in about a third of the speed as this one, but of course this doesn't come with bellows. You're going to have to get the bellows in the same way that you do for this. This has many, a, a lot more steps to it, so if you're not wanting to the stepless mod, you don't have to with this. Um, and this is the one I will say where when I did the stepless, it did want to drift. So if you want to do the stepless mod, you'll have to add some of that um, tape. You can find these mods online. I'll try to find a link and put it in the caption below. This one doesn't have nearly as much uh, twisting as this, like as much uh, capability as this one does. You only have about a, a 180 degree spin on it. Um, I did find with this one, they have bent one of the teeth on the um, underneath it with whatever that thing is called right underneath here that you're, uh, you calibrate with. They bend one so you can't go all the way past zero. I just took a pair of needle nose pliers and I bent it back so I could go as far as I wanted with tightness. So. You have, uh, otherwise you can't calibrate past what it's bent at. So you just gotta take needle nose, pull it out, all good to go. Now I can go all the way past chirp, no problem. All right, so these are definitely my top two grinders. Again, if you are into those bolder, chocolatey, sweeter co uh, coffees, then honestly, I think the Urbonic with the stock burrs will do you well, especially if you're wanting something that has a higher wattage motor, that's gonna do, do well for you. If you're wanting something that is, um, you know, higher clarity, sweeter shot, or, or Higher clarity, more acidic shots. Um, the SSP on the Acura is an, inc an incredible choice. If you're going for full out stock though, go with your Bonic. Now again, you can do the um, you can do the router mod on the on this for instance, which is going to take the RPM from 2600, and it, it takes it down quite a bit. I don't know qu quantitatively what it gets to, but it takes it down quite a bit uh, whenever you use just the uh, the variable. If you go to the highest speed on the variable, it sounds like it's taking it down a solid 30 40 percent. That's just a made up number. I'm doing it based off of frequency of pitch, so. Um, but, and I think that will help with some of the distribution when it's, when it's, when it's running that high of an RPM, I don't think it's at a, an ideal rate. I think 1400 is kind of like the sweet spot for most burrs. So I would actually recommend, especially if you have the 250 watt to use a router speed controller or to do some sort of dimmer modification to it. Whereas on this, I'm a little more wary to tell you to do that just because it takes already such a long time when you're grinding at such fine settings. Now to finish, I want to talk about a couple more things. Uh, filter coffee, right? Filter coffee by and far was better every time with the SSP burrs than any other burr set. Of course, as I said, the the Silver Knight SSPs were by far the best, but the multi-purpose red coat did a really good job. So filter coffee does well here. It does okay in the Urbonic. I prefer the Gevy burrs in the Urbonic for filter coffee. Does a better job in my opinion on both uh, filter and espresso than the stock. So. So there you go. Retention, a lot less without bellows here than here. There's a lot of retention on the Akira. You can't ask for everything on a $120 grinder. Um, there's a lot of retention here, but if you RDT and you use the bellows, you're gonna get in, you're gonna get out essentially what you put in. But again, we're talking in terms of a, a, a 20th of the price of something like this right here, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, for conclusatory remarks. I am excited about the potential of these grinders. I've been using them almost daily now for around two months, even with all these other great grinders I have around me. Filter coffee is probably the biggest weakness on these, but if you get those SSP burrs, um, or if you do the Gabby burrs, it really enhances your uh, coffee experience. Uh, espresso, it does phenomenally well on these. Uh, so. Uh, and I think one of the big issues with filter coffee on these grinders is that these come horribly aligned. So I would highly recommend in order to make your filter experience incredible, and I did a lot of this testing with the misaligned, I also aligned them, but I took out the shims because I wanted to replicate the experience the majority of you will have. Um, but if you're willing to take a few hours, take some aluminum foil and shim your burrs. There are a lot of videos on YouTube of how to shim your burrs. It doesn't matter what grinder it is. Shimming process is a shimming process. You're going to take slips of aluminum foil and shim underneath your burr in order to make a complete wipe when you do the marker test, which you can just look that up online. Maybe I'll do a video later. But for now, 
Just know if you do take the time to align your burrs, you're gonna have a much better uh, a much better situation on your hands. I genuinely think these grinders, if you put in the right burr set, if you align them, and if you uh, potentially lower the RPM so that's not running at close to 3,000, you're gonna have an absolutely incredible grinder on your hands, something that's gonna beat out your hand grinder, something that's gonna beat out all the way up to maybe, like I said, the Turin DF64. So if your budget is under 300 bucks, this is the way to go. If you're under 200 bucks, then again, you can do something like this, where you upgrade with the Gevi Burrs, and again, all of this is in the caption below, or you can buy this, just stock, and it's gonna be about $220. All right, one quick thing I failed to mention early on, the, a lot of these grinders come with these catch cups. Now this is actually really neat. If you don't end up changing your burrs and you're having an issue with fines in your filter brews, which those are fine for espresso, but if you're having the issue with filter brews, check this out. It comes with a sieve inside. So what you do is you grind straight into that sieve, okay? Grind straight into that. And then once the grounds are in there, you just put the lid on top and you shake it. Shake, shake it, shake it, shake, shake it, shake it like a Polaroid. Shake it, shake, shake it, shake it, shake, shake it, shake it, shake, shake it, shake it like a Polaroid. Okay, and then what happens is you pull it out. Whoops, look at all those fines coming out. And then it, it has pulled out. Look at all that. Woo! Oh, I see what I did. <laughs> those are not the fines that were pulled out. That's from a previous dose. I overdosed the coffee. Those are not all the fines, sorry. But those would be fines had I done that correctly. Anyway, so whenever you're doing filter coffee, you can, take, uh, you can take your filter coffee in here, you put it in, you shake, 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 you shake the mess out of it, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna shoot out the, uh, a lot of the fines. Obviously, we're not gonna get even the majority of the fines out, but it's gonna take out a lot of those fines that the grinder produces. So if you don't feel like aligning your grinder, if you don't feel like changing out your burrs for optimal clarity and sweetness of your brews, and you just wanna go a stock for a while, see if you, uh, if you like the grinder, the, they, uh, most of them do come with this. It's a really cool, uh, it's a really neat little mechanism that you can just remove a lot of those fines and then use whatever is left inside the sieve itself in your brew. Not necessary, especially if you're aligning your burrs and you're putting in some nicer burrs in there, but if you go with stock, that is an option for you. A cool little, um, cool little feature of the grinders. Awesome. That was a lot. I wanna thank you so much if you made it this far. Of course, if you have any questions, drop them below. I will be, I will happily answer them. Since I've got all these burrs here, I have a lot of, a lot of experience with all of these grinders. I didn't feel the need to take the time to test all six in front of you. I did that in the background uh, because I'm, I don't feel like, I don't feel comfortable presenting some of those grinders as I thought they were just less than ideal. These are the two that I came down to, although the famous 600N could be up here as well. I just thought it was redundant to test the Akira and the famous 600N side by side. So, Thank you so much. The only reason I was able to do this video was from my Patreon support. I was able to buy all these grinders with the exception of, um, let's see, the, the Shio Leo was from uh, AliExpress. Thank you AliExpress for that $200 coupon. The uh, famous 600N was from my friend down at Cafe Clement. Thank you, check out Cafe Clement. Um, but yes, the, the two Amazon grinders I purchased with Patreon funds, the Urbonic I purchased with Patreon funds, and the um, Akira Koki I purchased with Patreon funds. The Gevi Burrs, uh, or, or what, I, uh, what I'm thinking are the Gevi Burrs, both sets, Patreon funds. The SSP Burrs, Patreon funds. Um, these SSPs were from my friend again at Cafe Clement. Um, yeah, and then the Titanium Burrs, one set was from AliExpress, one was from, uh, that came with the, um, with the grinder. Anyway, all that to say, this is not a sponsored video outside of AliExpress so kindly giving me that and Cafe Clement donating the 600 in. So I wanted to thank that. Uh, and then if you feel so inclined, check out my Patreon link below. It helps me make videos like this to help people like you, to help the majority of us make incredible coffees at home. So happy to help you. If you have any questions, please again, comment below. Like and subscribe, do the do, do the that, do the whatever, tallywhack, give a dog a bone, this old man came running home. I don't know the ch child's tale, um, whatever. Anyway, I just wanted to thank you for watching this video. It was a long one, we held in together. You are the best, and um, I think that's everything. Yeah, if it wasn't, you can just ask questions below and I'll happily answer. All right, that is it for today. Um, if you notice, I did get a new tattoo. I'm sure you are all staring at it. It's SL28 to reflect my love of the Kenya washed coffees. That's kind of my bae. So anyway, thank you to my friend Josh out in uh, California for this wonderful tattoo. And thank you all for watching yet again, the most redundant ending of all time. And cheers. <laughs>